how do you build a high performance home on a budget? Well, I'm about to give you the formula, basically. Um, just remember, this is a this is a summary. All of these things we're going to get much more into detail, you know, much more into the details in the future videos of this series. Hey guys, I'm Scott True with Damara Homes, and this is episode two of my series um, about building a high performance home on a budget. So first, I want to get into uh, the goals of, you know, what what is high performance in a spec home look like. So uh, here on the left side, I've got a normal house. So this normal house is what I see done in this area here in Bastrop County. Um, so that you know, normal that normal might be different depending on where you are. Um, so this middle middle column is. Um, goals associated with my spec homes and and then the right side is my custom homes which are obviously going to be customizable so first durability normal house around here uh, has really nothing done in terms of water management uh, they, they uh, stick frame the house um, there may or may not be sheathing on the house there may or may not be a weather barrier on the house, believe it or not. And they side the house, poke holes in it, run their pipes and wires and windows and everything else. And then those holes will never, will basically stay there forever. Uh, they'll never be sealed. So that is really normal around here. Um, so what I'm doing different here with my spec homes is everything is flashed. Um, typically I don't put siding on right away because I run, you know, do the rough ends, flash everything before siding goes on. Um, and then on a custom home, it's really the same thing. It's just doing it in the best possible way. Um, so now let's get into comfort and health. Um, so a normal house around here, and I would say this is probably common, um, nationally that HVAC systems are way oversized most of the time and they're inefficient. Um, the tightness of the homes I know here are, are pretty loose. I mean, they, they slap them up quickly, all the holes stay forever, and we do not have to pass blower door tests here in Bastrop County. In fact, in Bastrop County, there's no code enforcement at all. So um, that's why you see some weird things here. Um, Humidity levels are going to be 60 to 80 percent. By the way, I know these things because I've tested uh, these things in homes built by other builders. Um, filtration is going to be minimum. It's going to be that cheap one inch filter that they put in the hallway. Um, and no balance, you know, to the ventilation in, in a normal home. Um, although I'm sure they don't have any uh, pressure problems because the house is loose enough to breathe that uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that later um, but what is happening is that they are driving air and probably moisture through accidental holes in the house the energy efficiency of a normal house is going to be anywhere between uh, 70 and 100 uh, her score i'm just using the her score as just a general metric um, I'm familiar with them because I get, uh, I get her scores on my homes and I've had them done on other homes too, so I can compare, um, to, uh, comfort and health on my spec home, um, HVAC is right sized, so it's running more efficiently, but, and also running all the time, running often, so it's doing its job dehumidifying and filtering that air. Uh, tightness on my homes, I'm going to get, if I'm moving real fast and I'm not trying that hard, really, I'm going to get anywhere between um, two and three ACH 50. Um, humidity, I again, I know this humidity because uh, we measure it in our spec homes. Um, and I'm seeing about 50 to 60 percent um, in our spec homes. And then filtration is going to be good. Uh, we're going to have that uh, thick 
four inch filter at the air handler. Um, and so it's catching everything coming in through the return. It's gonna be at least a MERV 11. Um, a lot of these details are gonna vary just depending on the house. And then uh, pressure balancing. Um, we use an ERV, our homes are a little bit tighter, sometimes real tight. And uh, using an ERV for balanced ventilation is important. Energy, with the energy efficiency, I'm gonna get, again, depending on the home, um, anywhere between 50 and 70 as a her score. And then moving on to a custom home, uh, we already talked about the durability. Things are flashed best possible way. HVAC is not just right size, but it's really optimized. Um, tightness, uh, on a custom home, I'm gonna spend much more time with all the details. And so we're going to get uh, ACH fit one ACH 50 really is my maximum on a custom home uh, because I really want to get below that. And really, it's not that hard. It's just a matter of paying attention to details. Humidity, I put 40 percent, but really it's customizable. Um, the custom home is really a custom process and it just starts with understanding uh, the owner and what their goals are. Um, what kind of experience they want to have. Um, so really on a custom home, everything is just customizable. Um, and then in terms of pressure, um, I should have put balanced ventilation there, a better word for that, but um, on a custom home, it's not only there, but it's going to be optimized and done in the best possible way. Um, in terms of energy efficiency, again, customizable. So moving on. Okay, so I wanted to talk about money and profitability kind of early on in this series um, because in episode one, I talked about how you can make nearly this, the same profit. And, you know, um, that wording is relative. So I want to, you know, kind of explain my thoughts on profitability. So if you are this builder that builds like you see on the left, uh, you are going to make much more profit than if you are a builder that builds like on the right side. Um, and so it is often the thought in this business that if you build high performance, you're going to lose too much profit. Uh, and so I want to offer a different perspective on this and and say, you know, why, why is this picture on the left normal? So the way that I see it is we should be building like on the right side, we should be, you know, uh, using a good products, using them properly, flashing everything, um, just doing good building. We should be doing that as a normal thing. It's home building as it should be. And the profit that's made on a home like that, that to me is normal profit. And then if you're a builder that builds like you see on the left, then what you're really doing is you're increasing your profitability and not just a little, by the way. Sometimes they're making ridiculous amounts of money by doing what you see on the left. Um, so the way I see it is a normal profit should be um, coming from like um, on the right side, you know, um, that should be kind of like the standard. And then if you build like on the left, you are just increasing your profit by cutting corners. So I wanted to offer that kind of different perspective. So this is my saying, uh, my slogan, home building as it should be. Um, that's the way I see it. Um, we, sh we should not be building like that picture. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, building, it, taking an action to keep water out of the house it shouldn't be considered um, extraordinary. 
but in this where I'm at in Bastrop County, it when people see me taping around a wire that's coming out of a house or using liquid flash around that. I mean, most people around here and all of the builders around here see that as extreme, like extreme OCD, um, insane amount of detailing on a house that is just ridiculous. That's, that's the way they see it. And I just have a different perspective. I see it as home building as it should be. And I see what they do as, well, criminal. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, kind of a bold statement, but that's the way I feel about it. So that's that. Okay, so how far to take high, uh, high performance? So unfortunately, it, this is very dependent on the market. Uh, there are times in the past year um, profitability on spec homes have been ridiculous. And, um, I mean like really high. So, you know, when the market is like that, we can do much more on the home in terms of high performance. Uh, so, but of course there's going to be times when the market shifts price, material prices shift, um, demand shifts, right? All these things. And profitable profitability is going to go down. And when that happens, we have to be very careful with where we spend the money. And, and so you're going to see that actually already. I've started doing that on some of my homes because the market is shifting right now. Okay. Speed. Um, I want to, I want to mention this. This is very important. Um, because when you build spec homes, you're tying up a lot of your own money. Um, at least we are. So speed is important. Even if you're using other people's money, um, you know, you don't, it, it's all about the speed and getting those homes finished and turning a profit. Um, I care very much about these homes, but at the same time, it's a business. It has to make money, right? Um, so I want, just want to just emphasize that speed is important. And because of that, um, is sometimes we're spending more money on material. Like for example, um, if I have to prep a shower by myself, I'm going to use hundred dollar sheets of curdy board because it's lightweight and I can cut it with a knife and I can install it in no time. Um, it's more expensive, but that speed with that speed, I'm going to gain more in the big picture. Um, by the way, this whole speed thing is why um, this video is coming out so late because we've been spending the last couple of weeks speeding through uh, framing, which I'm going to be showing you guys here in, in upcoming videos. Okay, so um, next thing to understand is I'm showing you my formula, right? My formula is dictated by the skills of the people that are here in this area, the materials that are available to me, my climate, um, several different factors. So I do think that it's important that you understand uh, concepts well, and then you apply your these uh, building science concepts to um, whatever it is that you have to work with, your climate, the skills of your people, what materials do you have available, and so on. Okay, so framing. I'm using, um, in this formula, a simplified advanced framing. So you can take advanced framing to a far extent. You can go with a single top plate. You can use clips instead of cripple studs. And I have even mixed two by fours and my two by six walls in places to get more insulation in there. So there's a lot you can do, but what I have found is that all those extra things are difficult for the framer. They're not going to remember them. It's a lot of effort for a very little return. Um, so I have found just keeping framing simple and basic. It's advanced framing, but it's still basic. Um, that works well. Now, I told you before that I typically we'll do the rough ends first and flash everything before siding goes on. I'm going to show you a different way of doing that 
in this formula. Um, I will say, well, I'm using a smaller range screen on these homes, um, which doing so makes the quality goes up because the quality of the work goes up because the trim details are easier. Um, and with that smaller range screen, nails hitting pipes and wires, you know, that's a risk. And that's, so that's a consideration. Um, but also there's value in letting the framers finish. Um, they don't want to come back to a job. It's so it, there's less, um, I guess there's less, less friction with that in that process. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you how to, how we're going to do that. Okay. So sheathing and roof decking, um, so for my sheathing, now, if you've been watching me, well, no one's been watching me for the past year because I, I haven't been on YouTube, but I've been using zip sheathing everywhere, on, including the roof decking. Um, it just happened that the price difference between zip and OSB was very small. And so that's, again, letting the market, the market is kind of dictating um, what I do here. And there was even a period of time where zip sheathing was the same exact price as OSB. There was a couple of months when that happened. And when that happened, I got a storage unit and I stacked it full of zip sheathing. <laughs> so all of that zip sheathing is, is used up on jobs now. Um, now we are seeing a big price difference. Right now the price difference between zip and OSB is like 30 to $40 difference. And so the market is changing. Um, demand is going down. Um, lots of things. So, so here we're saving money. We're not using the zip on the roof. Um, it's still going to be airtight. And again, I'm going to get into all that. Okay. Control layer, layers. I'm going to get into, um, how I deal with all of these. So water. So again, um, in the walls, I'm using the zip sheathing taped. All the penetrations are flashed. That's how we shed water. On the roof, it's primarily the, the shingles and the underlayment that is shedding the water. And then, of course, all the penetrations are flashed. Okay, so air. Um, my air barrier is continuous. If you were to take a cross section, you know, the house, you can draw with your pin. You can follow the air barrier with your pin without lifting it up. So it starts with the, the SIGA tape on the slab, um, moves up the wall through my tight soffit detail that I've done a video on. And then all of the roof decking is taped. So it's continuous all the way around the house. Okay, vapor. Um, so my walls are vapor open. And so technically it can dry to either side. I suspect that in this climate, most of the time from the sheathing layer in is drying to the inside. Um, and then I have that rain screen, you know, where any moisture that gets in there, it's driving, drying through the rain screen. Roof is not so vapor open. Um, but from the roof down, I'm, I'm conditioned. Um, We'll talk more about this. It's not just that I'm insulated at the roof deck, um, which I have seen that done and people have problems with it. Um, you're not going to have problems if you insulate the area. I mean, if you condition it, not just insulate, but also condition it with supply and return. Um, you may consider a vapor diffusion port. So all of this conditioning the attic and vapor diffusion port we're going to get more into in the future videos. This is just a summary guys. All right. So control layers, thermal. Um, so in my walls, I've got two by six walls. I am, uh, insulating that and I'm conditioning the attic and encapsulating, uh, the rafters. With HVAC, I'm keeping it very simple. Um, right sizing the units. So they're very, small compared to what other builders would put in the same house. My ventilation is balanced. Um, and with this simple system, 
um, it works. Humidity is kept down. The system is efficient. Runs often during the summer. Works. Okay, so how do you flash penetrations with siding already on? This is this is showing what I would normally do, but I'm changing the process a little bit. I'm going to use a smaller range screen. Um, we're going to get more into this, but what I will tell you is that um, if you look at that second picture over, I usually have these mounting blocks that go around penetrations. Siding will run up to those mounting blocks. So what I'm doing now is I'm just siding and putting those mounting blocks in with screws so that they can be taken off later to flash the, the penetrations. So that's a little bit of a, a little bit of heads up what, what we're going to be talking about in that future video there. With insulation, um, my minimum is R22 bibs in the walls and R22 foam at the roof deck. Doesn't sound like much, um, and it's not really, but you know, the house is well built, it's tight, everything, you know, HVAC is correctly sized, um, and HVAC is designed well, not just correctly sized, but it's designed well and delivering the right amount of CFM in each room. I've got the, ret the return placed well. Um, so this works as, as a minimum. We don't do this on every house. It goes up from there. So some some homes, you know, I'll do R30 at the roof deck or whatever. It just depends on the goal of the specific home. Okay, polysealing. Don't let the insulation people do it um, because this is, <laughs> this is exactly what you're going to get. They put the foam on the hole and it falls down and it's not covering the hole. <laughs> this is very common. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm running through this stuff very fast. Uh, if I don't, this video is going to get too long. But just remember this. It's, a, it's just a summary. Every single thing here, I'm going to get much more into, uh, you know, much more into the details in the future uh, videos of this series. So in summary, we've got our advanced framing, sheathing, um, zip sheathing for air and water, small rain screen, SIGA tape, the airtight eave, OSB on the roof decking. Um, and I'm going to explain how to make that airtight and how to make that work. Roof decking taped for air tightness, roofing and underlayment for shedding water. Um, all penetrations flashed for water and air at the sheathing decking layer. I'm siding first, making sure I have access to the sheathing because I want these framers to frame all the way through and get done. Um, I am poly sealing with, now if you don't know the, the term poly seal is what's used in the insulation industry, that's, that's how they describe, you know, sealing penetrations on the inside. Um, I'm using caulk because caulking is easier for me. Um, blown in fiberglass in the walls, Blown-in fiberglass is cheap. Um, it has thorough coverage and good R value. I don't need foam because the house is already airtight. Um, I am using foam at the roof deck though because it's easy to get it to stick to the roof deck, number one. Um, plus, I am relying a little bit on its airtightness, not totally, because my airtightness at the roof deck is a, really a combination of things. Um, correctly sized HVAC. Don't let the HVAC installer do the calculation. Um, most don't know how to do it, even though they say they do. Balanced ventilation. Okay, again, having a second or third opinion on HVAC sizing and design is going to be critical. Uh, I think this is going to, I think for, in my opinion, this is the, the biggest most critical thing on the build um, and it's the most misunderstood thing so get help on the HVAC okay so that's it guys um, I know I went through that fast video is probably still long too long um, but again I just wanted to give kind of a big summary of what we're going to be doing and then as we go through this series 
um, we are going to get much more into the details of things. So up next is going to be pre-planning. I want to talk about pre-planning because of what I was saying about the speed. Since things have to move fast, I have to pre-plan before it starts and be ready for everything. So that'll be the next video. Um, and then the one after that probably will get into uh, some building, a little bit more building stuff. So um, you can follow me on Scott, uh, Scott True Builds on YouTube and, and Instagram. And I will see you guys next time on Scott True Builds.